session two of Who on Earth Was Jesus? Now, the second story that John tells about Jesus was he's going to the temple and driving out the people who were selling animals and tipping over the tables of the money changers. Now, the structure of the temple was there was a huge outer court. This was known as the court of Gentiles and non-Jewish people were able to go into this court. Then, of course, you had an inner court where Jewish people went and that's where the altar for sacrifice was and the big bronze labor for washing. And then there was the actual building um, into which only the priests went. But this outer court, this court of the Gentiles, is where people were selling animals for sacrifice. Now the animal for sacrifice had to be an animal without blemish. So this was actually a necessary service that those animals were available for people coming to the temple to sacrifice. And the, the money changers were changing ordinary currencies into temple money because there was a temple tax to be paid and that had to be paid in this special temple money. So both groups were doing a service that was very necessary. However, these traders were dishonest and they were charging exorbitant prices for the animals and they were giving terrible exchange rates on the money. In other words, they were extorting genuine worshippers. And that's what enraged Jesus. The very place where God was to be honoured, they were behaving in the most ungodly way. And not only that, but it was in the court of the Gentiles that all this was going on. Now, non-Jewish people should have been able to come to the temple and see for themselves who God was. Instead, they would come and all they could see was corruption and greed, enough to put anybody off. Now, all the other gospel stories put this story last in the last week of Jesus' life. And it's probably the correct place time-wise. But John tells it very early for a purpose. When Jesus comes into a person's life, he's going to start a clean-up process. God does not stand for hypocrisy. He doesn't want outward worship while our hearts nurture greed, hatred, self-importance, whatever. And this has been all along, right back in the time of the prophet Amos. Amos wrote this. I hate, I despise your religious festivals. I cannot stand your assemblies. Even though you bring me burnt offerings, I will not accept them. Though you bring choice fellowship offerings, I'll have no regard for them. Away with the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the music of your harps. But let justice roll on like a river. Righteousness like a never failing stream. God is not fooled by outward appearances. He sees the heart and he finds it an absolute offence when we think that if we do all the right things, it doesn't matter what's going on in our heart. When Jesus comes to live in us, he will show us gently and bit by bit the things that he wants to change. It's up to us to cooperate we have to recognise when he shows us something that's not pleasing, we have to be able to confess that and say, yes, I see that. And I'm sorry for it, I repent of it. When we do that, he will cleanse us of that particular thing. So the Christian life is one of being changed step by step into the likeness of Jesus. Jesus comes to cleanse his temples. Change my heart.